Section 2. Where are we going next? Medicine has changed so much. What do you think a family doctor might do when I grow up? Let's use my future scenario generator. It can project a hologram to show us the year 2040. Is that a patient on your screen? Don't you have to see them in person? Not usually. Virtual office visits have replaced face-to-face -to -face visits in many cases. Sometimes patients talk to a software program. The software will give them a diagnosis and tell them whether they need to see a doctor. Many people wear sensors that can detect illness before we can. I'm looking at data from my patient's sensors right now. I also have instant access to all his medical records. People in our time already wear heart rate monitors. Other wearable sensors tell us how many steps we've taken and calories we've burned. Remain calm. There is a chance that you are about to have a heart attack. An ambulance will be with you shortly. Thanks to the patient's sensors, we caught his condition before anything dangerous happened. In my time, patients can even give themselves a quick checkup just by using their smartphones. Let me show you. This phone measures your heart and breathing rates and checks your blood pressure. With the proper attachment, it can even tell if you have an ear infection. What else can it do? It has an app that will process a photo of a rash and give a diagnosis. The message could include next steps, recommend an ointment, or tell you to see a doctor. There are attachments and sensors that perform routine lab tests. They analyze blood or saliva, check liver function, and much more. You put a small sample of saliva into a little attachment that plugs directly into your phone. The mini lab runs the tests and gives you your results. Your phone can also tell you what you need to eat, when you need to rest, and when you should exercise. It's like having a doctor with you all the time. Thanks for the great information, doctor. It was pretty cool to learn about what family doctors may do in the future. But what if I want to be a surgeon? Could robots be performing surgery or something? There are certainly some ideas in the pipeline about medical robots. Let's check some out. Robots, yes! Surgeons today already use robots, but in the future, they could be even more common. Robotic surgery. Most robotic surgical systems today have a camera arm, so the surgeon can see the surgical site and mechanical arms that have surgical instruments attached to them. The surgeon controls the arms with a computer console near the operating table. The console gives the surgeon a high-definition, magnified, three-dimensional view of what's happening. Robotic surgery lets surgeons perform delicate, complicated procedures that would be difficult to do using conventional surgery. We use robots to operate through the mouth or belly button to get where we need to go. No more big scars and less risk of infection. Surgeons in our time often make large cuts into the body to operate on organs. We also use robots for microsurgery. Their precision is needed for procedures such as connecting nerve fibers and tiny blood vessels. Surgeons in our time do everything with their hands. But robots could scale down a surgeon's larger movements into microscopic ones. What else might robots do? They could deliver food to hospital rooms and transport equipment. Robots could be good nurses, too. They never get tired, and they're patient and reliable. I want a robot to carry me around. Hey, what are you putting into that patient's body? I'm implanting sensors that will monitor vital signs and chemicals in the blood. We implant technology all the time. In fact, this patient is being injected with nanobots right now. What are nanobots? They're tiny robots the size of bacteria. They can squeeze through the body's smallest blood vessels. Why would you want tiny robots in your body? So many reasons. One type of nanobot acts like a white blood cell. It seeks out and destroys harmful germs in your body in just a few hours. In our time, 
It can take days or even weeks for antibiotics to fight germs. When I had strep throat, I had to take medicine for two weeks. Nanobots can be programmed to target and destroy the tiniest cancer cells without harming healthy cells. They can even be controlled by a surgeon to repair individual cells. Wow, that's amazing! Tiny robot history. The first miniaturized medical robot was a pill-sized capsule with a camera, video recorder, transmitter, and light inside. Once swallowed, the capsule sent images of the digestive tract, including the stomach and intestines. Section 3. Stem Cells and Implants I've thought about being a medical researcher, too. It's exciting to see how diseases may be studied and treated. Should we check out a future research lab? Hi, what are you doing there? I'm growing stem cells. Stem cell research is a hot topic in our time. Stem cells are used to study and treat disease. Stem cells. Every living thing is made up of cells, and we have many different kinds of cells in our bodies. For example, we have skin cells, brain cells, and blood cells. Most cells have specific jobs to do and they can't do what other cells do. Stem cells are different. They can make endless copies of themselves, and they can develop into many different cell types. They are found inside people of all ages, from newborns to adults. What are you growing them for? We use stem cells to repair or replace tissue damaged in accidents or by disease. Stem cell therapy lets the body repair itself. We already use stem cell therapy today when we perform bone marrow transplants. Doctors put healthy stem cells into the body to replace diseased or damaged bone marrow. For example, in your time, damaged heart valves were replaced with human-made or animal valves. With stem cell therapy, we can grow the valve using the patient's own cells. We're using stem cells to treat diabetes, spinal cord injuries, liver disease, heart disease, and so much more. We replace damaged and destroyed cells with healthy ones that we grow in the lab. I bet there's a lot more that can be done with stem cells in the future. Let's talk to that researcher over there. What are you working on? I'm printing out a heart using stem cells. What? The 3D printer makes sure that all the cells are in the right place. We're going to use it for a heart transplant. How a 3D printer works. A 3D printer uses a computer file to print an object one layer at a time. Not with ink, but with solid materials, such as plastic. Each new layer is added on top of the one just printed. Just as many slices of bread make a loaf, when a 3D printer puts all the layers, or slices, together, it creates the completed 3D object. We print out 3D organs all the time. They're made using the patient's own cells. That way, the body doesn't reject the new organ. How? We use live cells instead of ink. These cells are assembled layer by layer into rudimentary tissues, which will then be made into whole organs. Cammy, even in our time, surgeons have used 3D printers to print out a plastic, tailor-made skull for a transplant. Artificial ears have been made in the lab using biomaterials as well. We can even help slow aging. Stem cells are used to grow new organs, bones, and joints to replace worn-out ones. Amazing! Come with me. I'll show you. We have artificial eyes and lenses that provide amazing eyesight. We can zoom in on distant objects or see things in the dark. Hearing implants let us hear any conversation, no matter how noisy the surroundings. Researchers in our time have already made telescopic contact lenses. And we also have cochlear implants to help people with hearing problems. We even have brain implants to improve our memories. And I have direct access to the internet. Whoa! I need one of those for my science test. We're increasing lifespans too. We can also use gene therapy to slow down the aging process. We're also constantly monitoring our implanted sensors to detect and cure any diseases before they become a problem. Maybe one day we can live healthy forever. Bionic eyes. 
In 2013, the first bionic eye was approved for use in the United States. A tiny camera in a patient's glasses sends signals to an implant and then to the optic nerve. The brain uses the signals to create patterns of light. It doesn't restore normal vision, but it lets people identify objects and color. Section 4. Farther in the future. Is that true? Could we really live forever? Well, people today are already working on ways to extend human lifespans. One idea is to create artificial bodies and download our minds into them. So your body may die, but your mind won't. But it could go the other way, too. It could? How? In lots of ways, many people today don't eat a healthy diet. There's a trend against getting children vaccinated against deadly diseases. And antibiotics are losing the ability to fight off bacteria. So what do you think life will be like in 100 years? The farther we look into the future, the harder it is to predict. But we can look at some possibilities, assuming that everything continues to improve. What's she doing? I think she's trying to communicate telepathically. Sending thoughts to another brain could be like storing information on the internet. She's sending electrical signals. Everyone who can afford it has better brains, whether through taking medication, genetic engineering, neural implants, or prosthetic cyber brains. Babies in the future can be designed too. Genetic engineering lets parents choose what traits they want for their children. Genetic diseases are avoided, and intelligence and athletic ability are enhanced. So, everyone's a genius superhuman who lives forever? It could happen, but some people probably couldn't afford it. So, with everything you've seen, do you still